What comes to mind when you think of New York street food? Hot dogs? Well, before hot dogs took center stage in the Big Apple, New York street food meant oysters. How did New York City oysters go from the city's most popular food to being non-existent? And what does it have to do with the Lenape tribe? Building materials, street carts, and sewage. Stay tuned as we crack the shell of this mystery. If you want oysters in New York today, you're going to have to pay a pretty penny. What? But at one time, they were the cheapest option in the Big Apple. That's because New York Harbor was home to nearly half of the oysters in the world. When explorer Henry Hudson first arrived in New York in 1609, there were 81,000 to 89,000 hectares of oysters growing in New York Harbor. Not only were they abundant, but the oysters were massive as well. They grew as large as 30 centimeters. But Hudson was far from the first person to discover this bounty. The local Lenape tribe had been harvesting oysters for decades. They wrapped the shells in seaweed and tossed them into a fire where they eventually opened. The first European settlers called Ellis and Liberty Islands Little Oyster Island and Great Oyster Island. Oysters were such a bountiful resource that Pearl Street, in the city's financial district, was paved with oyster shells. The shells were also used to produce mortar paste and became one of the main building materials of the burgeoning city. By the beginning of the 19th century, oyster houses and taverns were appearing all over Manhattan. They were as prolific in New York City in the 1800s as coffee shops are today. And they were as popular with the rich as they were with the poor. However, it wasn't acceptable for a woman to go to a restaurant unaccompanied by a man until the ladies' oyster shop opened in Union Square in the 1880s. There, women could enjoy their favorite dish without needing a chaperone. With its incredible popularity, oysters couldn't last forever. And as the city continued to grow, so did its human waste. Over 600 million gallons of raw sewage got dumped into New York Harbor every day. Sewage poisoned the oysters, and over-harvesting and landfills reduced the number of oysters available for harvesting. But New Yorkers ate over 1 billion oysters a year, and they were falling ill. In 1927, all New York Harbor oyster beds were closed down. The beds had been condemned, and New York now had to import oysters. 45 years later, the U.S. passed the Clean Water Act. But it wasn't enough to revive the New York oyster industry or renew the oyster beds. When Hurricane Sandy hit in 2012, it flooded the streets of New York City, filled subway tunnels, and cut power to millions of New Yorkers. I know, I was here. Scientists believe that if the oyster beds had still existed in New York Harbor, they would have reduced the storm's destructive force. But relief may be on its way. The Billion Oyster Project started in 2014 and attempts to bring oysters back to New York Harbor by 2035. The project has already added 28 million oysters to the harbor. That could return a food source to the waters around Manhattan, and it will also help clean the harbor. A single oyster can filter 30 to 50 gallons of water every day. Imagine what billions of oysters could do. Oysters aren't the only seafood enjoyed by both the rich and poor, oh, by the way. We'll take a look at how lobster went from the food of the poor to a rich delicacy on another episode of Origins of Food.